Photo editing is hard, right? Well, that's about to change. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through seven of the latest AI-powered features in Canva and see how we can use them to breathe life into these photos gathering digital dust in your camera roll. Hey, what's up guys, Ronnie here. Let's be honest, how many times have you snapped what you thought was the perfect shot only to find out your photo was poorly framed, was too dark, or had a bunch of people you don't know in the background? If that's you, and if, like me, your camera roll is full of pictures, this video is for you. In it, I'm going to review all of the latest AI-powered features that will make photo editing a breeze. It will really speed up our workflow and also make it fun which is very important because very often times we don't edit our photos because it's boring let's admit it all right so before we start i need to let you know that most of the features i'm going to be talking about in this episode will require canva pro okay a lot of these new features that canva shipped in the canva magic studio are actually canva pro features so if you're not a pro user and you're using canva for free i would suggest you start by watching this other video right here where I explain all of the latest Magic Studio features. All right, so that was my warning to you. I don't want you to start watching the video and realize, oh, I cannot use any of these features. Also, if you believe it is time that you upgrade to Canva Pro or if you simply want to try it, we have a 45-day free trial for you to try Canva Pro and all of its features, including all of the features I'm going to talk about in this episode. We'll have that link, which is our affiliate link in the description of the video. Now let's go to Canva and start editing some photos. Let's start with a feature that is actually free. It's called Magic Edit. I have this photo right here, which is a headshot of myself. And let's say I want to reproduce what we've seen on Canva's super cool hype video where they were announcing the new features and they were painting over a lady's outfit and ask the AI to create a more professional looking outfit. All right, so let's try to replicate that and see if we can transform my basic black t-shirt into to a more professional outfit. So the way it works, of course, you need to select your photo, then locate the edit photo button right here. I'm gonna click here. And the feature is magic edit. As you can see, it has no little crown like the other AI features we are going to talk about in a second, which means it's free. So I wanted to start with this one so you can still at least try this one feature. So let's click on it. The way it works, it will showcase your entire photo. I had kind of resized my photo, cropped certain parts of it, but this is the entire photo. And so when you start editing it, it will show it in its entirety. So the first step is to brush over the area to edit. Okay, so I'm going to brush over that area right here and simply try to follow the detour, the contour of my shirt like so. I can change the size of my brush, which is convenient. Here, it doesn't matter if I release my click while brushing over. What's important is that everything is brushed over. So I'm just to make super sure that everything is included. I'm going to add this little dot right here. All right, so that is the first part of the job. You have to paint over, you have to brush over the area of your photo you want to change. And once you're done, click on continue to go to step number two. Step number two is to describe what you want the AI to change for you. So describe what to add or what to change. And what I want to do here is to add a business suit that looks sharp. Add a business suit that looks sharp. Okay, I'm gonna generate that. And Canva is going to work its magic. The images are ready and I can see that two of them did a good job while the two ones on the lower part here have some messy things going on with my arms and hands. But since I'm going to be using this as a headshot, I don't think it's gonna matter. So that's the first one. It looks clean, casual, that's me. They kept the black t-shirt, I like that, but they put me a jacket over it. So this one is good. This one has actually given me a shirt which looks nice, but I don't really like this part right here. This one is interesting. The jacket has a different, it looks cheaper than the first jacket though. And this one, 
Yeah, this one looks like they gave me a COVID mask or some sort of a water polo kind of head protection going on here. I'm not sure. So it seems that the real choice is between this one and this one. The question is, do I want a shirt or do I want a more casual look? I think I'm going to go with the more casual look. I want to show you, I could have prompted further, but I like this one. So I'm going to keep this one. Okay, so now I have the photo right here. It kept the original cropping, which I like. All right, so I'm going to put this one right here. And to show you the difference, I'm going to bring back my original photo. Okay, so there you go. This is the original photo. I changed that to this photo right here, which looks more professional. Let's admit it, like the jacket, it just saved me 50 bucks. Like I don't have to go and buy a jacket because Canva's AI feature could generate one for me that looks real. Okay, so that is the first feature I wanted to show you, Magic Edit. It works on other things as well. So let's try another more fun use case. So I found this photo in the Canva library, okay? of a young lady looking very happy at what seems to be an empty box. Okay, so I think we could have some fun with this and add some stuff in the box so that it justifies the happy look on her face. All right, so same thing. Let's click on the photo, edit photo, use magic edit. And this time I'm going to brush over kind of like the surface here of the box. Okay, so let's do something like that. Let's cover this part right here. Let's see, there's something going on in this box. Don't know yet what, but it is going on. Okay, and it's making her very happy. Continue. So what could it be that makes that young lady so happy? Well, maybe she found this box in her grandmother's attic and maybe the box is full of money. So she opens it and she's like, what? That's a lot of money. Okay, so let's try to represent that in our prompt. Describe what's in the image. Well, add a bunch of dollar bills in the box, nicely stacked. Okay, let's try this. Add a bunch of dollar bills in the box, nicely stacked. Okay, let's see if Canva is able to generate the money in the box. All right, so Canva is done generating the four different images. The first one right here doesn't look so natural. It looks like the dollar bills are round or something. So I'm not happy with this one. This one, on the other hand, is much better. Like, it's not completely obvious that these are dollar bills, but it's fine because we understand the message, especially when the image will be shrunk down. Let's have a look at the other. So this one also round. Yeah, this one not so great. So I could go ahead and use this one. Now, if you want something else, if you're not happy with this, if you change your mind, you can always come back to step number two right here. You don't have to click done and confirm. I could come back here and I will keep my area brushed up up right here and I could just simply change my prompt. Could write something like three cute puppies. One black, one white, and one brown. Okay, let's see if Canva can generate three cute puppies. All right, the puppy prompt was not a big success because they were not generated in the box. So I suggest we move to the next photo I want to edit with magic edit, which is a photo of me again. And I'm going to do something that Canva doesn't recommend you do, which is to mess with people's face, people's look, etc. But because it's me, I feel it's all right. I always wondered how I would look wearing long or mid long curly black hair instead of this. So yeah, let's go ahead and brush over this hat and see if I can add some hair to this photo. All right, so I might use a smaller brush for being more precise here. I feel like the sunglasses part is important and my ears as well. I don't want to brush over my ears too much. Okay, this looks like a decent detouring. I'm gonna continue. Okay, so add some nice, curly black hair. Okay, try that Canva and please make me beautiful. All right, so it seems like we have a misunderstanding here because Canva added some hair to my hat. Okay, so that's not what I expected. So maybe add some nice curly black hair instead of the hat. 
okay or replace the hat by let's go with this replace the hat by some curly black hair yeah, let's do that this should work better generate so yeah you kind of have to be precise with your prompt and i hope this works because if it doesn't work i would be pretty disappointed yeah okay we do have something going on here <laughs> uh pretty interesting so that's not black hair that's kind of like blonde hair marilyn monroe kind of hair this is kind of funky this i don't know what this is i like that style but this and this i'm not sure okay so and we have this one which is not great either so i feel like i could work with this photo it kind of gave me you know like the open hat thingy which is cool i'm not sure so i'm gonna push regenerate so you can always use the same prompt regenerate and see different options because i believe in canvas technology and i believe we could get better results so this one kind of looked like owen wilson here this is not here this is weird and this is weird so you know what i'm gonna stick with this one right here let's assume i have been blonde in a previous life i'm gonna keep that this is not too bad and if you want to kind of hide the imperfection here like it's not natural that there's a shade right here so what i could do is to edit that photo one last time with magic edit in order to do that i'm gonna just click on edit photo again magic edit and i'm gonna brush over this thing one last time okay so i'm gonna brush over it like so yeah and i'm going to add a headband okay what color would look great with this like a purple add a purple headband okay let's try this all right some headbands have been generated this is nice this one is also cute that could do the job this one also cute yeah actually we have some interesting headbands i think i'm gonna go with the mermaid looking one and i think we are good to go so this is the new ronnie guys yeah next time i go get a haircut this is what i'm gonna go for all right, it is time we move to the next set of features. These ones are two different features, but one of them is not new at all. It's the background remover. But the one that is new is called Magic Eraser. And these two features will help you erase clutter or erase people in the background of your photos that you might not want to see in your photos. So let's go ahead and use another photo. First, we're going to quickly go over the background remover. For those of you who are new here, have never used Canva before, or maybe you never use the background remover or you don't know what it is i believe canvas background remover has been one of canvas best selling feature since the beginning since it was introduced so let's pay homage to this feature and actually show you how it works and both of these features magic eraser and background remover are pro features so just be aware of that so okay background remover select your photo click on edit photo and it is the first one right here it will just wipe the background from your photo which will allow you you to do different things like for example I'm gonna create a quick background for half of this page right here okay so this is the middle I'm going to duplicate this okay bring it here push it forward and I can now transform this photo into a sticker okay so how would you do this you click on the photo edit photo and I'm gonna go for an effect right here a shadow effect and go for outline okay so if you click on outline you can change the color of that outline and create some sort of a sticker effect like so you see I can make that bigger now I have Ronnie and Diana with duck faces as a sticker I could export that with other background if I'm a Canva Pro user and have that and you can change the border to any color you like yeah I thought I was going to show you that background remover is a great feature to have for just isolating the subject of your photo and then be using it on some other types of background but it is not new and what I really want to focus on is the other feature the magic eraser so I have this other photo here of Diana walking up the stairs here to this church in a village near to where we live in Spain and I would like to get rid of these three people here so we only keep Diana in the photo I think it would make this photo more interesting sometimes it's very difficult to snap a photo where there's no one in your frame so yeah let's see how we can fix that in post-production using canvas so again photo selected edit photo let's go for magic eraser this one right here also a pro feature so here the process is similar brush over the image so you will need to brush over the person 
or the thing in your image you want to remove. And once you release your click, the Canva Magic Eraser will start working its magic and get rid of that person or that thing. And you see it will reconstitute the pixels. It will interpolate the background of the photo and replace the foreground with what it believes should be the background. And if I look here, it looks really well done. Like I don't see anything weird going on on the wall. It's going to be a little bit more tricky for these two right here because there is, you know, like this separation of the two parts of the church. Like this part looks like a newer part that has been rebuilt. So let's see how it deals with that. I'm going to erase that person first. Let's see how it goes. So again, I just simply brushed over the person and then released my click. Okay, not as well as the first one. Let's start by just removing the second person first and see what we can do to fix that mistake here. Okay, so this was better. Now I'm going to just keep brushing over the parts that don't look perfect yet and see if by doing it again and again, like iteration, it starts looking better. Yeah, this is a bit better. Now there's still like this weird stain on it. So maybe I could continue brushing and see if I can even improve that by iterating one more time. All right. So this is, I believe, as best as I can go. Could try one last time. Oh yeah, that's actually better. So there we go. Now we have something quite interesting. I could do it one last time, just brushing over this part right here. So adding a little bit of that brick wall to see if Canva recognizes, okay, this is part of the design and just use that to reconstitute the background. Yeah, I'm happy with this. I could live with this. The photo is now ready. I don't have anything else to delete from that photo. So you can just simply click on the little arrow right here and your photo is going to be saved. I'm going to move this to the side and bring the original photo right here side to side so we can compare the before and after. So we can clearly see in this side by side comparison that the people have been removed. The wall has suffered a little bit, but I believe I do prefer this photo for for someone who doesn't know this church, they will never notice that this is not the original state of this actual wall. Okay, let's quickly use a different example, a different photo, because I want to show you that this photo right here was a little bit complex because of the different texture of the wall, I would say. But this one right here should be a breeze for Canva Magic Eraser. So I'm just going to get rid of this photographer walking down the road here using Magic Eraser. So again, magic eraser and I'm going to try brush only over the parts that I need gone here. Maybe his shadow as well. There you go. So let's see how well this works on this photo. All right. So that's the first try. I can see a slightly blurry stain here. So what I'm going to do is to simply brush over again. So I would really recommend you try brushing over a couple of times until you achieve a result that looks natural. So this didn't work very well. So I will do one last thing here. I'm going to brush this area again and see if Canva can harmonize this. I don't need it to be perfect, but I need it to look natural. So I'm just trying things here. Okay, so that is not too bad. I believe once this photo is rescaled to a smaller size, it will look better. And yeah, I'm gonna live with this. All right, so that was Magic Eraser, a pro feature. Let me know what you think of this feature. I'm kind of, I like it, but I think it could be better in the way it reconstructs the photo and the background. But yeah, let me know what you think. Have you achieved some good results with the Magic Eraser? I'm curious curious to know. Let's move on to the next feature, which is auto adjust. Auto adjust is great for two reasons. First, well, it's a free feature, so everybody can use it. And second, it will enhance your photo in just one click. So for those of you who have no clue on where to start, what slider to start moving for making your photo look better, well, auto adjust is going to save the day. So let me show you how it works. I have this photo of Diana and I at a restaurant and the photo is okay, but I mean, the lighting could be a bit better. The colors are a bit dark. So let's see if we can adjust this photo. So I'm going to, with the photo selected, click on edit photos. This time you will go to your 
your adjust tab right here. So don't select any of the Magic Studio tools, just click on adjust. And auto adjust is this big purple button right here. When you click it, it will just auto adjust, apply some corrections to this photo. Okay, so you see this is already been applied. I'm going to reset the adjustment so you can see the difference. Darker, again, auto adjust. Again, I'm going to reset it. Some luminosity has been added to this photo. And the second thing you can do is to control the intensity of the adjustment. Okay, so by default, it will be around here, but I can give it more. So I could amplify the work of the AI to improve that photo. So it was by default on zero, but I can push it and therefore change more of the settings that had been changed. If you want to see what has been changed, then you can just simply look at these sliders. By default, they will all be in the neutral position. So where the dot actually is at zero. Okay, so this one moved from zero to 19, the brightness, so more light light has been added to the photo, etc, etc. You can have a look at this. And that is usually what is overwhelming when somebody who is not used to tries to edit photos. They see all of these sliders, they don't know what they do, and therefore it's overwhelming. That's why I love auto adjust because it does the work for you. So if you are happy with this, then you can fly with it. You can add more intensity, you can add less. But me, I was pretty happy with this. Maybe I go a little bit more, maybe 10 more. So I make this photo even more bright. All right, so that is auto adjust, very easy to use. Now, there is one more thing to auto adjust that I believe you should see. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to be using this photo right here. So this is a photo that is a little bit more complex. You can see clearly a lack of brightness, a lack of lighting on me right here. So um, my face is quite dark, like everything is quite dark here, but this background is okay because it was illuminated by all the lights in this decor, okay? And the Canva logo was also luminous, so it created this light. But me, I'm very dark. So if I would just simply, let me duplicate this photo first because I'm going to mess around with it. So this is the exact copy, okay? Let me just center that. Okay, so this right here is the photo I'm going to rework in the first place. If I would go to edit photo and adjust and use auto adjust, this is what I would get. The entire photo is being slightly modified so it's brighter. Okay, if I click here and I see what has changed, well, more brightness, more highlights, a bit of contrast, etc, etc. But I'm still quite dark, all right? But there's one more feature that I believe is very useful for this type of photo right here. So I'm going to select the photo again. All right, so this one has been slightly modified already. This one is the original photo. So I'm going to select it, edit photo, click on adjust. And what I want to show you is this drop down box right here. It says select area. By default, it would say the whole image. So you can apply some customizations on the entire image. But if I click here, I can choose to apply the modification, the adjustment only to the foreground or only to the background of my image. I'm going to select the foreground. Okay, so my foreground is selected. So Canva works to separate the foreground and the background. And now with my foreground selected, I can try to add more brightness to the foreground. And you see how I come to life? So I could go all the way to 100, but I'm going to try to be a bit more subtle than that and simply try to, yeah, to illuminate myself. Okay, the blacks probably don't touch them, but I brought a bunch of light to the foreground of the photo. So I could just make it better. Like I could could just change that. If I had modified the entire photo, the background would be too luminous at this stage. So now I can work with the background a bit. So now the background is selected. I can also add a bit of luminosity here, a bit of contrast highlights. And now look at this. Now I have this photo, which is, in my opinion, much better than what we have here, because I am much better lit right here on this version. So that's what I wanted to show you. It's really two different features here. The first one is auto adjustment. This first photo has been auto adjusted. And the second one is really to play around with the selected area of the photo that I want to adjust, which is what I just did right here. All right, guys, let's continue our photo editing journey with Canva's AI powered features and move on to these two next features. I'm talking about Smart Crop and Magic Expand. Okay, so these two features will help you correct the framing of your photos because a lot of us are not really great at framing our shots. So let's see how these two features work. So first, Smart Crop. All right, so I have this same photo again right here. Maybe you know what? I should probably go fetch 
the corrected photo. So I'm going to go grab this one and paste it here. So now I do have the already corrected, the auto corrected photo. So I'm going to select the photo, edit photos. And this time I'm going to go to crop. All right, crop. You'll see this button, a similar looking button than the auto adjust, but this one says smart crop. And smart crop, good news, is a free feature. So everyone will have access to this. Now, if I click on smart crop, what's going to happen is that Canva is going to analyze this framing, the framing of this photo and suggest a better framing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So smart crop, there you go. So Canva suggests we keep this framing right here, which is a much more close up and we are very centered on the image. So I kind of like that. So I'm just going to accept Canva's suggestion right here. So I went ahead and brought back the original photo so I could show you the before and after. So this is the before and the after smart crop, which is kind of nice. I like that we lost a little bit of the restaurant like context, but this photo looks cute and it's much better framed indeed because here we had all of this space which is not being used properly. All right, so that is smart crop. It basically helps you improve or correct the cropping, the framing of your photos. All right, so let's crawl down and discover the next photo that needs improvement. So the photo is this one. This photo has been taken with our friend Rob Bolivar, who you might have seen on the channel. He's also a Canva expert. He creates content in Portuguese. So yeah, he came and he was in Barcelona. We had the chance to meet him for the first time in person, that is. So we took this photo and we took a bunch of other photos, but the person who took the photo, I believe it was someone working at this cafe. She was not a great photographer, but my foot kept being cut right here. So I'm going to try to get the tip of my foot back using Magic Expand, which is a pro feature. So let's click on that photo, go to edit photo and find locate Magic Expand. Okay, the one with the little ladybird right here. So once you are here, what you can do is make sure you're on the expand tab right here, where you should be by default. You have to choose different method or different limitation, like boundaries for this photo to be regenerated. You could go freeform, which is what I'm going to be doing. You could go whole page and you see the purple framing changes. So if I go whole page, like the AI is going to try to reproduce the entire page right here, which is probably going to look messy because there's a lot to recreate. Could go one on one, which will create a square photo. And you have a couple of different options right here for the different types of formats. Me, I just want the tip of my foot back. So I'm just going to go free form and I'm not even going to recreate this part right here. Like I don't care having this just want the bottom here of this photo. Okay, so I'm going to go like so and like so I cannot move the photo up a bit, but I think this should be enough to get the tip of my foot back. All right, so I'm going to magic expand that and hopefully the AI will understand the texture of the shoe, the colors of the shoe, the pattern, everything. Let's see how it works. So there you go. The AI finished its work and we have four different alternatives here. So that is the first one, which is not great. I'm going to zoom in because we can see that the shoe is kind of transparent. There is something not quite well defined here. So meh. this one a bit better, but not great either. Like we can see this little triangle here being cut. We have this one, which is better, but the color is a bit washed out. Let's hope the last one is better. Not really. So this would be the less worse of all the versions. So I could keep that. Yeah, let's keep that first. So I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to zoom back out to see the photo now. So that is the result. It is not perfect but it is better than to have like one third of my foot cropped on this photo because people will really not focus too much here. They will focus here, especially because I'm pointing my finger at Rob's face. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Like it kind of saved my photo. And if I had more time, I could have regenerated this photo again and again, ask Canva for four new alternatives. And maybe one of these four would have turned out much better, but I'm not going to spend too much time explaining this feature because it's quite self-explanatory. All right, guys, let's move on to the next AI feature, which is called Magic Grab. Now, this one, which is also a pro feature, is very powerful. It will help you reinvent your compositions. OK, it will really give you the freedom to take a photo and really create from that photo without having the boundaries of the physical limits of that photo, if you know what I mean. So let's use an example and show you how that would work. Here is a photo I found in the Canva library, and I thought this would make a good use case for demonstrating how Magic Grab 
grab works. So let's select it, go to edit photos and find magic grab. There's grab text as well, which is not the same thing, but magic grab right here is what you are looking for. So what does magic grab do? Well, it will allow you to separate once again, the foreground from the background of your photo. But now I can move this foreground to anywhere on the photo. I could get the girl out of the picture. I could do a bunch of different things. And now these are two different elements. I have my foreground and my background that I can move separately. So when I was telling you, it allows you to really reinvent the composition of your photo. I was not kidding. Look, I'm going to place the girl here and I'm going to expand this, set this as a background. So you see, I could immediately make that background much bigger and don't lose the texture. Okay. Or I could have made the girl smaller or bigger. It's really up to you. I'm going to keep her at this size and now I can add some text here and you could even create some effects like you see on the iPhone lock screens where you have the time displaying and a photo, but the photo is slightly over the numbers of your time of your clock. I don't know if you've seen this. It's not new, but it's a feature that Apple introduced with iOS 15 or 16, I believe. Let me grab some text. Okay. So it doesn't matter which text I'm going to use this text right here. Feeling cute. Okay. So the effect I was mentioning is if the text was about here, I could grab my foreground. So the subject and use the position button to bring the girl forward and therefore like bring her over the text and then create something quite cool looking like so. And if you want to add to this feeling of, okay, she's in front of the text, like this three dimensional kind of effect going on on this visual, you could even add a shadow to the girl. So for adding the shadow, just click on like select the image, go to edit photos, locate the shadow effects. Okay. So I could have a slightly drop shadow and you could play around with the blur, the amount of shadow. Let's have like a quite strong shadow, something like this, play with the angle of the shadow as well, the intensity, the distance, everything really, basically, you could have a larger shadow. And then what I can do is to simply yeah, make the girl bigger. And I would have this shadow effect, like kind of shadowing on the text. So there you go. This is how I would use magic grab on this photo. Another example, I have grandma dabbing right here on a nice yellow, like gradient background with some texture, really like these backgrounds. So edit photos, magic grab, she's going to be detached. There you go. Could make her smaller. Similarly, I could set that background to be bigger. I'm just going to send it to make it as the background of our photo and yeah, make grandma bigger. And why on earth would grandma be dabbing Ronnie? Well, I don't know. Maybe she discovered that our brand new course Canva for social media was still on sale on Udemy and it was already a best selling course on the platform. So if she discovered such a thing, she might have discovered because of a nice visual that she saw on social media. And therefore she went straight to Udemy and purchased the course and learned how to use Canva to create social media visual and felt so happy about her new skill that she was dabbing like crazy. All right. So that is what happened to grandma. Let me quickly finish this visual that I am putting together in front of your eyes by using the border style. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add some rounded corners, 25, maybe that's too much. Let's go 20 to this Udemy thingy right here. So there you go. Maybe grandma is a slightly smaller here. So there you go. I just showed you that in a couple of seconds, going from an image like this one that you find in the Canva library, you could very quickly put together some new visuals by reworking this composition. Okay. So this photo had no space or anything else, but because I could keep the background, which is really good looking and the visual, I was given a lot more freedom thanks to Magic Grab. And that's it, guys. I've showed you all of the features I wanted to introduce to you today. We have covered a bunch of different photos and I showed you how you can use them to really make your photos pop, to reinvent composition, to get rid of people in the background, to auto adjust the colors, bunch of things you can now do with the boring photos you have in your camera roll.
life. Now, there is one final step. Like for those of you who are tired of watching me, you can just resume to your normal life. Or if you are up for a little challenge, I have one more thing I would like to try. I would like to try to edit this photo of Diana right here. So because I believe this is quite a complex project, I'm going to make a backup of this page. So I'm going to duplicate this page. So I have my original photo untouched here in case things go south. Okay, so first select this photo right here. I'm going to try the easy way out. Okay, so easy way out would be to probably start by grabbing Diana, like the foreground, moving her out of the picture so I can start cleaning up the background. So for that, I'm going to use magic grab. Okay, so magic grab this photo. Yep, it worked. So moving Diana this side and I have my photo on this side. Okay, so I'm pretty happy that this photo has been nicely, like though it was not easy because it's not just a human, it's a human and some biscuits and some spoons. But now what do I do with this? Okay, because Canva was not super great at like reconstituting what was behind Diana. So what I could do with this is to use a magic edit to try and prompt a new thing here. Okay, so I'm going to brush over this image and I can brush over most of this image. Okay, so like these people right here, I'm going to try and keep the ice cream here that we see a little bit of the flooring. I kind of like the furniture, like the green furniture there and the lighting of the shop. The flooring is also okay. So let's Let's move that and let's actually join that so the AI has some space to work with. Let's go create something like this. And I'm going to prompt the interior of an ice cream parlor with some green wooden windows. So the interior of an ice cream parlor with some green wooden windows. Let's generate that. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I do believe it is worth it to try and see how far we can push the boundaries. We can push the limits. All right. So this is a bit much. So I'm not going to go for this because Diana is going to come right back on top of this. Now it could work. Let's see what other things we have. Like this is interesting. What else do we have? So we have this one. Okay. So yep, this is interesting though. This is a bit weird. And then we have this one. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this one. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. And now putting Diana right back here where she belonged in the ice cream shop, we could have something like that. Okay, so we have now both of these pictures. And there you go. I want to do a before and after. So I'm going to move that picture here, bring this other one and put it side by side. And now I will let you decide like is the edited photo better than the previous one with the people in the background? You let me know in the comment section. And this is where I'm going to leave you guys for today. Thank you for watching this tutorial until the end. And I'm going to leave you with two other videos right there featuring some other novelties in Canva that I believe you should watch next.